but I want you to open your Bible, if you would, please. I want to share a message with you that I think is really important. And um, I'm, it's, been a, it's been a challenging season for all of us, but God has been so good to our church, so good to me, so good to you. He's helped us through this season. I'm really excited about it. I'm excited that uh, you're here. And the uh, text I want you to turn to is the book of Hebrews chapter 11, but let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you for the opportunity to be together again. I thank you for those that are watching from home and those that are here. We thank you for all those who are seated out here in our nice shaded areas in these tents. We thank you for the kids in the back. We thank you for those who will watch this on demand. We ask your blessing and your grace. We pray that what we talk about today will be uplifting and helpful, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. All right. Do, do, do me a favor. Cut this one off. It's so loud. I can hardly hear myself. I'm talking to God. I feel like it's, it's competing with me a little bit. So all the rest of y'all can, can go down in the shade, and you, you don't, so you won't be hot. There you go. I can hear myself a little better. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 is a text that talks about something that's often overlooked. It's a simple statement made in the text that answers a question that most of us struggle with. Have you ever asked for something and been told not yet? Have you ever waited for something and you look up and all of a sudden the answer is still no, not yet? Some of you can relate to that. You ask for a husband and so far, the answer has been what? Not yet. Some of you asked for a job, and the answer so far has been what? I can't hear you. The answer is what? Not yet. Not yet. Now, that, that gets frustrating when you've waited, because most of us have a time frame in our mind. And the time frame is set. You know, we set our clocks and say, hey, look, now, Lord, I have been waiting for a man, and I've been waiting for this for so long. Now, I'm expecting that you, by, oh, I don't know, maybe within the next 10 minutes, you're going to send me a job, pays $150,000 a year. But so far, the only answer you get is what? Not yet. So you dial up the Lord. So let me dial him up and see if I can get him. Uh, and you say, Jesus, now listen, I have waited. I have prayed, and I have read here in the Bible, it says that I can ask for what I want, and when I ask for it, I'll receive it. So I'm asking. And the answer still is, what? Not yet. So then you start wondering, well, is the Bible true? Is God telling the truth? Of course he is. Problem is, you don't understand the power of not yet. Have you ever asked for something and you didn't get it, and you're glad you didn't get it. You ever wanted somebody so badly, you just dreamed of them, and then you're just glad you didn't get them. I remember when I was in high school, I saw this girl. I was so impressed with her. I told, I, it was a dumb thing to pray, but I did say, if she date me, Lord, I might backslide. That's what I told the Lord. That's a dumb thing. Isn't that dumb? Just dumb. That's what I said, though. And for some reason, I just was enamored with her. I thought that was going to solve all my problems. But I'm glad that prayer, that thought, that dream didn't come true. Sometimes waiting is the best thing for you. Sometimes going through seasons of difficulty can be your best friend. Not getting what you want right now. Not getting the new job. Not getting the new house. Not getting to go to the place you want to travel can be the best thing that ever happened to you. In Hebrews chapter 11, there's a truth taught that I think is phenomenal. Here's what he said, Hebrews 11:13, 13. And this is the chapter that talks about the heroes of faith. And in the first part of the chapter, the first 12 verses, you have all these people who had all these great things happen to them. I mean, they were phenomenal. I'm sorry, the first 34 verses. Amazing. But chapter 11, verse 13 there's a statement made, says this. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. 
Verse 13 says, some people waited and never received the promise. That, my friend, is scary. But let me read further in verse uh, 35. Because in verse 35, it describes people who got what they wanted, and then it describes people who didn't get what they wanted. Now, listen to what it says in verse 35. Women received back their dead, raised to life again, like Lazarus, for example. Mary and Martha saw Lazarus rise from the dead. It's a great moment. The, the woman who Elijah prayed for, whose son died, he rose from the dead. It's a great moment. Great, great miracles in the Bible. But then it goes on to say, there were others. There were others. The not yet people. There were others who were tortured, refusing to, re to be released so that they might gain an even great, better resurrection. Some, verse 36 says, faced jeers and floggings, which means whippings, and chains and imprisonments. Verse 37, they were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. Uh, this is the, verse 37 uh, uh, goes on to say, they went about in sheepskins. And goat skins, they were, to, they were dressing in sheep skins and goat skins because they didn't have any money. They had to wear animal clothes, animal skin for clothes. It said they were destitute, persecuted, mistreated, and the world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Pause. Now, I don't mind being part of the group that has the dead raised, and I don't mind being part of the group that has victory. I want to be clear. I do not want to be with the others, the not yet group. It is my desire when I pray to receive what I ask for when I ask for it. I don't like being a part of the not yet group. So if I could tell God anything, I would say, now, if I'm being honest before God, Lord, you know I don't want to ever be a part of the not yet group. But if I'm honest, I've had many not yet moments. I've had moments when I was challenged, persecuted. I've had difficulties. We've just come through a season, and we're still in it, but we, we've been coming through a season that's way longer than we wanted it to be, way longer, cost way more than we ever expected it to cost. How do you deal with the not yet moments in your life? How do you process the moments when you're on the other side. What was wrong in some of the teaching we've had about faith and walking with God is we give people the impression that if you serve God faithfully, everything will be fine. Everything will always be easy. There'll be no challenging seasons. You won't have anything that you'll ask for. You know, you quote verses like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Say, ah, right, there you go. Then you stand up and pray with authority. I'll never want. But you're sitting in want right now, and you're confused. There are things you want you don't have right now. And there are times when, believe it or not, God is in that. We've painted God with the wrong brush. You do not give your children everything they want. Can I get an amen? And there's a reason why you don't. I got some horn blows on that one. There's a reason why. You know they don't know. They think they know. But they don't know. And so you say, no, I'm not doing that. And sometimes they're grown children, not just young children. Sometimes they're employees who work for you. No, I can't give you that day off. I apologize. You have to cancel your trip. No, I can't give you this or that. There are moments in life when no is the best answer. Not yet is the best answer. Some of you want to be married, but you don't want no man in your life. Not yet. Not really. You don't want anybody telling you what to do or advising you in any way. You want to be a soloist. So believe it or not, this could be the best season for you. Not yet could be the best answer. Because when you get one, and I often counsel people who prayed hard for one and got one, and now they don't want them anymore. They're tired after a week. They're tired. <laughs> They're frustrated. Not yet would have been the best answer. Paul said that. Celebrate where you are until you get where you want to be. Now, I want to give you, if I can, <laughs> some surprising things in my life. I wrote down a few. 
that I am surprised by. And I, 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 um, <laughs> I wrote these down because, uh, well, it's the truth. Here are my big surprises, things that came to me, a plan that God had for me that I could not see. God had a plan. And sometimes when he's saying no to you, it's because he's got a plan you can't see. For example, my career path, me being a pastor, that wasn't my plan. Never thought about it, never prayed for it, never asked God to be one, ever, never. But God said no to some other things I wanted to do and said yes to this. I wanted to drive around in the cart. We got down here, what is that, a golf cart? And I wanted to work at Burbank Studios in Los Angeles. That's where I wanted to work. They was paying $500 a week back in 1980. I wanted that job. I wanted, let me say it again, I wanted that job. And I wanted that job badly. But the Lord said, not yet. They had a big actor strike, if you remember that. The big actor's guild strike happened right when they were considering me. I said, wait a minute. Hold on for a second. I got my friend. He put a good word in for me. I'm going to the studio with him, looking around, making myself known. You know, you got to know people to know people to get the opportunities. And then the strike happened. I said, oh, this is the devil. And the Lord said, no, not yet. Because if you get this job, you're not going to be Pastor Rick. If you get this job, you won't meet Diane. If you get this job, you won't be preaching a sermon said not yet. You're going to be stuck in the wrong place. So the Lord said, not yet. Not now. So I end up in a career I never dreamed of. Number two, my marriage to Diane. I never dreamed that. At that age, I was in my early 20s, why would I want to get married? I used to, people used to ask me, so you, you want to get married? I said, well, how do you spell that? How do you spell it? I think there's an M in there. But see, God knew you need that woman in your life. You need her in your life. You don't need those other people you see and, 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 you know, going out with. You don't need those people. You need a Diane. I had no plans to live in Savannah. This was not my location, my plan, my dream. I did not wake up one day and say, I'm leaving Los Angeles to move to Savannah, Georgia, and live off of Geechee Road. I never had that mindset, never thought it. But God said, no, you need to be in Savannah. That's my best plan for you. I never, ever dreamed to have children, two children at least. I thought I wanted four children till I had one. Then the number went up to two, and that was it. Close the farm. That's it. My dream, God had a plan. So God looked at me and said, listen, I know he has an idea. I know he has a plan, but uh, his plan is flawed. I've got a better plan for him. I'm going to bless him in ways he never thought. He's so impressed with $500 a week, I'm going to bless him. He don't even know it. Sometimes when God is saying not yet, there's a reason. Now, let me tell you how he got me here. What was God's way? What was God, what was God waiting to line up for me? Sometimes things have to line up for you to get what God has for you. So here you go. Here's one thing that had to happen. I had, I had to have the right influencers. I had to meet the right people. I had to be around people who changed my thinking. I had to go to certain experiences that influenced my behavior, influenced my choices. Number two, I had to have a different mindset. <laughs> I had to learn that there was life beyond where I was living. I, I thought this was the only place, but no, I had to learn, no, this is a plan that you can't think of, but my mindset was wrong. I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes God wants to bless you, but you think wrong. You don't have the right people in your life. Thirdly, I, I had to have a different academic discipline. I had for, for my dream to come, for the dream God had for me to come true, that I, was, that I couldn't dream because I couldn't see it. I had to have a, a certain academic experience. For me, college was the pathway. For me, studying theology was the pathway. For me, I had to meet certain people. I had to learn the word. I had to, I had to, that was God's path for me. And now if I had said no, if I told God not yet, I would have missed this opportunity. And so sometimes you got to pause and say, well, they don't have to go to school for their dream, but I have to go to, for mine. Or maybe you don't have to go. There are other pathways to success. But whatever pathway that is, mentorship, internship, I don't know what it is for you, but God's goal is to get you to that place 
those influences to change your mindset and to get you into that discipline you need to get to the place you need to be. I had to change my perspective on life. <laughs> I am, I, I'm, I'm watching that happen now. My perspective on church is changing. My perspective on us gathering is broadening. You would not be outside. Trust me. But even when we go back inside, guess what I'm still going to do? Bring you outside. My perspective has changed. I thought we had to have church a lot longer. Y'all going to be out of here in 11 minutes. That's amazing. I, I mean, I thought you had to go long in order to be heard. But I've learned that you can handle it. It don't have to be as long. I've learned that online works. On demand works. There's a bunch of y'all watching you right now. Matter of fact, I went someplace to <laughs> get breakfast before I came in here. And the person sitting next to me, she was, in, she was sitting there, and I was picking up my to-go order for me and Diane. And she said, uh, hey, Pastor, you ain't got much time. I said, excuse me? She said, you know you're going to be late. I said, well, and she said, I go to your church, but I'm not coming today. She says, I'm going to eat breakfast, and I'm going on demand. And then I saw somebody else's children, and they're eating too. I won't say who they were. But that children was in there eating. And I leaned on them. I said, hey, you here? They, they didn't know they was coming to church either. You can come on demand. You can live stream outside, inside, all kind of options. And that's different. It takes a different perspective to embrace all that. And a lot of churches are going to struggle with it. And then the last thing God had to do for me, you ready? And this is so important. In order for God to get me to where he wanted me to be, why he said not yet for me was because I didn't have the right passion and the right hunger yet. Some things you want, you're not passionate enough to be in business. Sorry. You're not hungry enough. You won't read anything. You won't ask anybody. You're not disciplined enough. You're not committed enough. The Bible says, blessed, Matthew 5 and 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. You have to wait till a certain level of hunger comes in your life. When I started this, when I not started this, when I took over the church, it had like uh, 70 members, 45 or so coming. I didn't have the hunger I needed to have 1,000 members. I didn't have the passion, not yet. God says, wait, 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 wait. And some of you need to see that. Instead of getting frustrated, open up your heart. Say, God, bring the right influences in my life. God, if you would, help me get the right academic training I need if I need it. Father, awaken in me a passion. I have a passion for you. I have a passion for this church. I have a passion for the future. I'm, I am committed. One of my members saw me the other day, and I went down to this uh, thing at uh, Daffin Park, and they had readers, celebrity readers. And so I was one of the readers. I was petrified because I was reading the children. And you know when you read the children, it's different, especially when they're close to you. If they're far away, it's different. But if they're close, like being in a little circle. And so I was sitting there, with, <laughs> and I was the only reader with an iPad because I don't carry books around. I carry iPads. I was the only light among the book holders. And, and I read this book. You want to hear the book I read? Of course you do, right? So I was reading this book to them, and um, I love it. It's one of my favorite, favorite books, and it's by Dr. Zeus. Don't comment. And I, 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 I bought this called All the Places You'll Go. I love it. And uh, congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your way, and you know what you know, and you are the guy who will decide where to go. And I was sitting there reading my book, and I was showing them the pictures, and they were more interested in the pictures than me reading. Then they decided that they wanted to turn the iPad to the next page. So then I had to say, okay, 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 wait a minute, because they didn't ask. They started pointing. And then they got closer and closer, and then after they started getting closer, I said, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, you, know, you get to turn one page, one, two, three. I said, I give them orders. Okay, you can turn in order. 
And then after that, they said, well, they wanted to stop me from reading, and they wanted to read. They said, wait a minute. Can we read? Not you. I said, wait a minute. I'm the celebrity reader. I have practiced this book. I brought the audible version to this book. I listened to this dumb book five or six times so that I could pronounce all these funny words. I was all prepared, and you now want to be the reader. You are not the celebrity readers. I let them read. They won in the end. I got about a third through the book, and I said, okay. In the end, the bottom line is go to the right places. Did you have a good time, children? Yes, and they left. But my point, my point was, at the end of the day, it's all about moments like that that are life-changing, inspirational, helpful, and that change your life. There's something about moments that change your vision and ignite your passion. And when I was reading to those kids, I realized that you can't impact them if you're not passionate. So God had to wait till I got to a place in my life where I could be passionate not only about adults, but about children. I had to be passionate enough to sit there and work with them through that little, uh, little awkward moment. Passion, hunger. And I believe that God is waiting for us, waiting for you to get enough passion, enough hunger to receive the best he has for you. I close with one final thought. What has God been waiting for the church people, religious people to come to? I believe that um, this whole season has been a season where God has wanted to help us as Christians, religious folks, whatever you call yourself, to come to certain realizations. And the first thing I think that that's really become clear to me during this season is what we need to face that is not sustainable. I think that that's one of the first things that's been on my mind for the last several weeks. I now see what's not sustainable. In your life, sometimes God will say, not yet. That, 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 that can't happen for you until you realize how dangerous your life is right now. Don't you wish before the heart attack came, you saw it coming? Don't you wish before the physical challenge came that you saw it coming? Don't you wish before the financial collapse in your life came that you were wise enough to see it coming? If someone had told you that's not sustainable, spending at that level, living at that level, doing it that way, fussing this often, in your marriage, in your life, in your ministry, it's not sustainable. The way some churches work, the schedule is not sustainable. I, I just believe there are moments in life you need to review everything, your job description, your maturity level, your debt, because what you're doing is not sustainable. And that's where I want to take you. That's the question I want you to think about for the next several weeks. Uh, there's a rope. If you go on the website now, there's a guy hanging on a rope. And he's hanging on that rope. And he's holding on. And underneath the question that's asked for this, this month's series is, is this sustainable? The answer is no. You can't keep living by hanging on a rope. Sometimes God will say not yet to you because he's trying to show you, hey, 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 you need to, don't deal with that, not yet. Don't worry about big this or big that. You need to talk about your health. You need Not yet, don't worry about a husband or a man. You need to think about your mental health. Not yet to one area is a call to think about something in your life that's not sustainable. And there's some things that are not sustainable. If we're not focused on the right things, We'll get off on the wrong things. And so I want to talk about that. And there's a list of things that are not sustainable. One is you can't go up without learning how to go down. There's a time and a season for all things. If you have success, you're going to have loss. You've got to learn how to manage both. It's not sustainable to assume that everything's going to always be easy. There are moments in life when you are living and you're just barely making it. Barely putting up with people. Barely getting along with folks. You're disappointed every day. Hope deferred makes you crazy. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes you do things you shouldn't do. That's why you've got to deal with your misery. 
You can't just hold on. Well, I, I'm holding on. I just, I can't hardly make it. I, I feel like I'm losing my mind. You got to deal with that. I don't need to be an unhappy guy. If I'm unhappy, it will leak out into the rest of my life. And lastly, you ready? Lying is unsustainable. If you lie to yourself, if you lie to each other, that's not sustainable. You're holding on to a rope. So sometimes God will say, not yet, stop. Let's not deal with anything else. None of the other things you're talking about. Let's deal with the lying in your life first. Let's deal with the fact that you're miserable. Let's deal with the fact that you, you have a dream of business and you want to be up here, but you don't know how to manage when the, when the numbers are down. You've got to be able to deal with all of that to be sustainable. And this month, I'll talk about all of that. And I want you to think with me for a minute. Where are you? What are you thinking? I want to pray for you now. And I want you to ask God to help you pause just for a moment in your life. That's what I've done during this whole season. Now that we're getting ready to make some in-person services, I see what God said, not yet. Even though everybody else has done what they've done, now I see. We got to come back differently. We got to find ways to do more things with kids, young people. We've got to find a way to reach people differently, both home and in person. We've got to open our hearts to people who are on demand, people that are online. We've got to find ways to get with you in small groups, intimate groups. You can't just be a number in here. I've got to reach out to you. I care about you. And some of you know I'm telling the truth. God has said not yet because he loves you. I gave everybody my email address, pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org for a reason. Pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org for a reason. So when you are sitting by yourself and you say, you know, I want to ask the pastor a question. You don't have to say not yet. You can just email it. Reach out. Some of you I need to pray for. Some of you need to find a small group. Try and do all I can because I care about you. Stand with me, would you please? If you're, I can say that now. Stand with me, please. Glory to God. Ain't that amazing? You in your car, you just sit there. You fine. Father, I lift up everybody. Thank you for the not yet moments. There are people in the Bible in Hebrews, some of them had their dead raised, some of them had great miracles, but some of them died without the promise. Not yet. For some, the path was different. You promised them an eternal blessing. You said that you would bless them eternally, and I believe you will. And I believe that we have received a lot of the blessings that they, they worked hard to get to us. Those who wrote the Bible, those who went before us in the faith. They didn't get the blessing, but we did. Just like a lot of our children will receive things that we never received. It's not for this generation to have all the blessings this church will own. There's another generation coming after me and after us. But we'll get all we believe we're, all we're supposed to get. We're going to reach up and strive and do all we can. But we embrace the not yet moments. And we, without fear, believe our future will be bright. In Jesus' name. Father, there's anybody here that's heard this message and they'd say, the one thing I have done, Pastor Rick, that's not right is I've been saying not yet to God. And maybe I shouldn't say that to him. Maybe I need to say, Lord, I invite you into my life. I invite you into my mind and my heart. Let this be the moment that they give Jesus an opportunity to make the difference in their life. I pray, God, that your spirit would bring blessing, healing, and grace. And we give you all the honor. May this be the moment they say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. In your name I pray. Amen.